Okay, let's just have a look at these uh, HSC questions here about rainfall. Okay, this first one is from 2014. Uh, in Mathville, there are on average eight rainy days in October. Which expression could be used to find the value uh, of the probability that will rain on two consecutive days in October in Mathsville? Okay, so this is obviously a probability question, and the information they gave us is that there are eight rainy days. And I know in October there are 31 days. Okay, so I'm just going to write that down. And the idea behind this is I want to use the fact that the probability of anything happening, probability of something happening, equals to the number of ways it can happen divided by total possible outcomes. Okay, and in this case, we're trying to find out the probability of uh, it raining on two consecutive days. So let's just find out the probability that it's raining on one, one day in October 1st. All right, raining in one day in October. Okay, and we know that there were eight rainy days. Okay, so there are eight possible ways it can rain. And then we know that in total in October, there are 31 possible days. So those are all our possible outcomes. So eight over 31 is the probability that it will rain uh, on any given day in October. Well, the question is asking two consecutive days. And the way we calculate that is, if I have uh, two independent events, in order to calculate the probability of both of them happening, I multiply them together. Okay? So in this case, the probability of two consecutive days raining going to equal to 8 over 31 multiplied by 8 over 31. Okay, so that's how you do that question. Cool, uh, now we've got a uh, volume question here, and this is from the 2016 paper. So it tells me the area of a roof is 30 square meters. Any rain that falls on the roof flows directly onto a garden. Calculate how many liters of water flow onto the garden when 20 millimeters of rain falls on the roof, okay? So anytime uh, I get a question like this, I like to kind of draw it out. So basically, we have a roof here, okay? Um, <clears throat> and I know that the area, and the area of the, the roof is 30 square meters, okay? And that is going to flow into a garden somewhere. So, a little flower, there's my garden. Okay, I know that's going to flow into the garden. The question is asking me, how many liters of water flow into the garden when 20 millimeters of rain falls onto the roof? And so, it's telling me that the height, the height of the water that is falling into the garden uh, is 20 millimeters. Okay, and basically, I want to be able to find, I want to find the volume of the water that is collected in the roof. And the way I can do that is, I want to convert these into the same units. Right now I have square meters, and right now I have millimeters. I want to be working with the same units. And so I want to convert 20 millimeters into meters. You can also do it the other way, uh, but I find it easier to convert between units of length rather than units of area. Okay, so we've got 20 millimeters. If I want to go and convert that to centimeters, I divide by 10. So 20 divided by 10 is 2. And then if I want to convert that again, centimeters into meters, I divide by 100. So that's going to give me uh, 0 0.02. So 20, mil 20 millimeters equals to 0 0.02 meters. Okay. And now all I have to do to calculate the volume, calculate the volume of the water that's collecting the roof, I know that the volume of any uh, shape really is the surface area multiplied by the height. In this case my surface area is 30 square meters and my height is 0 0.02 meters. Okay. 
And if I multiply that out together, I'm going to get 0 0.6 cubic meters. Right? We're talking about the volume. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so now, what we want to do is we want to convert this into liters because the question asks us how many liters of water flow into the garden. Okay. And the way we can do that is we could do it a uh, few different ways. Uh, one way you can do it is convert this first into cubic centimeters. I know that in one cubic meter, one cubic meter, there's one million cubic centimeters. Okay. So if I use this information here, I can then convert uh, my cubic meters into cubic centimeters. So 0 0.6 cubic meters is going to equal to 600,000 600, cubic centimeters. And then one more piece of information I need to use. I know that one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. One milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. Okay, and so I know that 600,000 cubic centimeters is simply going to be equal to, sorry, 600 <laughs> cubic centimeters equal to 600,000 milliliters. Um, and then the last thing you have to do is convert 600,000 milliliters into liters. And all you have to do then is divide by 1,000 because I know that 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter. Okay, so 600,000 milliliters is going to be equal to 600 liters. Okay, and that's my final answer for this question. Okay, so this is a kind of scale question that we're looking at. Uh, so you'll need a ruler for this one. But basically, you want to measure out this line here. You want to measure out this line, and you'll find that if you measure it out, you get three centimeters. Okay, so I've got th all right, three centimeters there. And basically, I want to find a ratio because it tells me that um, it's approximately twelve meters um, when to scale. Right. So when I measured out, it was three centimeters, but in real life, it's twelve meters. And I want to find a ratio in order to do that because they're asking me to find the area of the roof, or rather confirm that's 216 square meters. Okay, and so I'm going to do that. I'm just going to simplify this ratio. Uh, if I divide both sides by three, I get one cm to four meters. Uh, and then I want to measure out this line here because I'm trying to find that the area, the area of the roof, and that's going to be uh, this length here multiplied by this breadth. Okay, that's the area of a rectangle. Uh, if you measure this length here, you'll find that it's actually 4.5 centimeters. Uh, and I already know this one's 3 centimeters actually, so I can just write that in there. Uh, so now I want to be able to find if this is 4.5 centimeters, if this length is here, what would it actually be in real life? And to do that, I can just multiply 4.5 by 4, okay? And then I'll get 18 meters. Right, so now all I have to do is just confirm uh, those two lengths. So I've got 12 meters multiplied by 18 meters. And when I multiply them together, I get 216 square meters. Okay, last bit of this question. Uh, it tells me that all the rain that falls in the roof is diverted into a cylindrical water tank which has a diameter of 3.6 meters. Uh, but, and during a storm, five millimeters of rain falls into the roof. Calculate the, <coughs> calculate the increase in depth of water in the tank due to the rain that falls into the roof during the storm. Okay, so there's a lot of information going on there. Um, but what I want to do is just kind of highlight the relevant things. So we know that there's a cylindrical water tank and it has a diameter of 3.6 meters. Um, and the five millimeters of rain is going to be important too because that is falling onto the roof. And the first thing you want to realize is that uh, when we look at this roof, it's a lot bigger than the cylindrical water tank, okay? So the increase in height in the water tank is not going to be five millimeters because the increase on the roof was five millimeters. 
So we have to kind of think outside the box here. What we want to do is we want to think, okay, so the area of the roof here is 216 square meters. We know that from the previous question. Okay, I'm going to write that down first. Area equals to 216 square meters. Um, but then when we think about it, this water is collecting on the roof. So we know that the height, the height there is going to be 5 millimeters. Okay, height is going to be 5 millimeters because it's uh, collected on the, the surface of the roof. And I can convert that into meters. All that's going to be is uh, 5 divided by 10 divided by 100. Uh, so that's 0 0.005 meters. Okay. And now I want to find the volume of the water that's collected on the roof. So I can just find that by multiplying my surface area and height. That's 216 multiplied by 0 0.005. And that's going to give me 1.08 cubic meters. Okay, 1.08 cubic meters. So we found the volume of the water that's on the roof. But what happens when it starts going into this cylindrical water tank here? What's going to happen? Well, here we have to use the um, formula for the volume of a uh, cylinder. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to write that down. And so to finish this off, I've got the uh, volume of a cylinder, and I've got the amount of water that's actually coming into that cylinder. Okay, And so I know that the volume is actually going to be equal to this amount here, because that's the amount of water that's going inside. Okay, So now I can make that equation, and create that equation. I actually know the radius. The radius is just half the diameter. So that's going to be 1.8. And so I can substitute that R in as 1.8 squared multiplied by H, which equals to uh, the amount of water coming in. And if I make H the subject of this equation, I can realize that I can just simply find H from that. That's going to equal to 1.08 divided by uh, pi multiplied by 1.8 cubed. I'll uh, just make that clear, it's multiplying it out. Uh, and so you'll get 0 0.1061. I'm just going to round that off. Actually, does it say there? No, it doesn't say down in decimal places. I want to do it to three decimal places. Okay, so 0 0.1061. And remember, what are we looking at? We're looking at height, okay? And we're using units that are in meters. Okay, so that's going to be 0 0.106 meters to three decimal places. And that's all you have to do.